So let's take a look at the costs for accessing data on a hard drive. There are two different types of accesses we need to differentiate. The first is a random access, the second is a sequential access. Let's start with a random access. Random access means the operating system asks for any random block, for any random sector on the device. So this means we usually have to move the disk arm here to move the disk heads to the right track and then a second effect that usually occurs is we have to wait for some rotational delay. So basically a random access looks something like that in terms of costs. So the first is a seek time, the arm movement to get to the right position. Again, that's in the order of 2 to 20 milliseconds. It depends a lot on the specific device. Rotational delay means once the disk head is on the right track, we might still have to wait till the platters rotate to the right position on that track. So for instance, if the disk speed in terms of the disk rotations is something like, say, 12,000 rotations per minute, so this is 200 rotations per second, which means one rotation takes one divided by 200 seconds and usually we have to wait on average half a rotation which means the average rotational delay t dot r is this number divided by 2 so this is 1 over 400 or in other words this is 2.5 milliseconds yeah, that's a rotational delay. Sometimes this is also referred to as a latency. You have to be very careful when looking at the specifications of hard disks. There are so many different numbers and sometimes they're used in various ways. So the cost of random access involves several components and just one of that is the latency or the rotational delay which is 2.5 milliseconds on average for a hard disk rotating at 12,000 rotations per minute. The third is then the transfer time. That's the actual time to transfer the sector, the hard disk block, and read it from the disk. So these components determine the total cost of a random access. Actually, this is already simplified. There are other components that can be factored in that add up to the total number, like head switch times, then the time it takes for the operating system to send the request to the hard disk controller, stuff like that. But the major components are those three. Those three components determine the costs for reading any random sector from the device. In contrast, what does sequential access mean? Well, in a sequential access, we assume that there's a random access first before starting the sequential access. So we move the arm once to the right position but then we keep on reading from the same track. Hopefully, that's the idea. So once you read, say, here one block or one sector, here you continue reading the other sectors that are on that specific track. So you do that till you read all the sectors from that specific track. And then you keep on reading sequentially, which means once you finished reading this track, you switch to a different disk head. So you stay on the same cylinder, but switch heads. Switching heads is relatively fast. That's more on the order of one millisecond. Once you switch successfully, then you read from the same cylinder, but using a different side of a platter. Yeah? And then you continue doing that. Yeah? So you switch heads, you switch through all heads, continue reading, reading, reading. Eventually, you read all the data from the entire cylinder and only at that point in time you need to switch to a different cylinder which I ideally should be an adjacent cylinder. So why an adjacent cylinder? This is because it's slightly faster to seek to an adjacent cylinder than it is to seek to a cylinder here. Yeah, if you switched here that would take slightly longer than if you switched here. So sequential reading is really like you stay on the same track once you read all the data or once you wrote all the data to the track you try to stay on the cylinder but switch to a different head only if you exhausted reading or writing to from that cylinder you switch to a hopefully adjacent cylinder. 
That's how sequential access works. So with that, you can determine the cost of a sequential access. And that is something like that. So you first seek to the cylinder that is the arm movement. We also have for a standard random access. Then there's rotational delay again, usually half uh, the time it takes to rotate a platter. Uh, then there's a transfer time, which is a transfer of the actual data. But, but here transfer time is hopefully the, the entire track. And, and only at this point here, so if you are finished reading the entire track, you switch to a different head on the same cylinder. Yeah, then there's rotational delay again, and then there's transfer time, which means transferring the actual data, or if you continue reading the entire track, and so forth. So you basically repeat that, you switch through all heads on the same cylinder, and only when you're done with that, you switch cylinders. So it means you seek here again to the adjacent cylinder, and then you continue all over until you're finished reading. That's how a sequential scan works. Well, um, and there are a few optimizations you can think about. You can position sectors in a way that this rotational delay is minimized. So it basically means if you switch from, say, this cylinder to this adjacent cylinder, so what you can do is, um, rather than positioning the sectors in a way that they continue immediately here, th this wouldn't make sense because while you're switching, the platter, of course, keeps rotating. So it's better to leave a little space here, which means this rotation is exactly the time it takes to switch to the adjacent cylinder. And this has the effect that in many, many situations you can continue reading directly. So with that, the rotational delay can be minimized. However, all of this is done by the device automatically. So in the old days, people had influence on positioning the sectors on how to read data from the device. Nowadays, a lot of that is managed by the disk controller. We will get back to that. So when you look at hard disk evolution, you observe how the different types of accesses evolved over time. And therefore, I'm depicting here two hard disks, one from 1970, an IBM hard disk, and one from 2012, which is one of the best still these days. So in 1970, that device had an average access time of 30 milliseconds and a sequential read performance of 800 kilobytes per second. The Seagate of today has like five milliseconds average access time and 174 megabytes per second sequential read access. Those are measured times based on numbers from Tom's hardware. So average access time improved by a factor of six only in those 42 years, whereas sequential read performance improved by a factor of 218. So that's a huge difference. That's a huge gap in how the different types of accesses improve. And there's a famous experiment that you can do, um, and I do it as a simulation, that is, you read a thousand blocks of size eight kilobytes. What I assume here is there is a transfer rate as shown above. This is also sometimes referred to as a bandwidth. And I simulate that in two different ways. In the first simulation, I assume that each block is randomly read. So basically what that means is I wanna read a thousand blocks, a thousand sectors from the device. And every time I have to pay the costs for average access time. Plus of course the costs to read the, the block. So it's basically a thousand times this stuff here. And that gives me the cost for randomly accessing a thousand blocks. The second option is a sequential read. So on a sequential read, I make a best case assumption in the sense that all the blocks, all the thousand blocks are adjacent are on the same track and then on the same cylinder as I explained before. So basically in the ideal world, what that means is I only have to pay once the average access time and then it's a thousand times eight kilobytes divided by the transfer rate. So that's the time it takes to read a thousand eight kilobyte blocks from the device. Well, reality is a little more complex, of course, because as I explained above, I should also factor in here head switch times and um, cylinder switch times. So um, 
there, there are actually more hidden average accuracies when reading sequentially large files. But let's ignore that for the moment. The simulation results are as follows. You see that if you read each block randomly in 1970, this takes like 40 seconds, 40,410 milliseconds for the IBM device. For the Seagate, it takes five seconds. So this is an improvement by a factor of eight. The sequential read, that is taking 10 seconds in 1970, but only 51 milliseconds in 2012. This is an improvement by 205. And another important factor here is also those numbers here. This depicts the improvement of a sequential read over the randomly read blocks. So here the difference was only a factor of four. The sequential read was only by a factor of four faster than accessing each block randomly. This changed dramatically in the past years. So now it's a factor of 99. The sequential read is by almost a factor 100 faster than accessing the blocks randomly. And we will get back to that effect multiple times because this has a huge impact on how index structures and how data structures are designed in computer systems because it pays less and less to randomly access data. In many situations, it's a good choice to access the data sequentially. Okay, here's another graph. I got that from Tom's Hardware, which is a very nice web page, by the way, it lists all kinds of devices, measures uh, performance of those devices. And I just picked some numbers here. So what you see here is the sequential read and the sequential write performance, it's more or less the same number. And you see this evolution from 2000, that was around 40 megabytes or so. And then it increased quite a bit till today. So the best devices are around 225 megabytes per second, which is quite a nice number. In contrast, random read performance, so the random access time was something like that. So it was around six to seven milliseconds. So then it got way slower in 2003 and then increased a little bit, but here we are on a plateau kind of. So, so usually you find numbers around five milliseconds for the very good devices as the one I explained be before, which is, happens to be a very expensive device as well. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.